Hello, my name's Nick Manning and I'm the manager of the front office at Redfern Legal Centre. Lately, we've been getting a lot of inquiries about rent reductions and potential evictions from tenancies. And so I've asked one of our tenancy advisors to help us answer some of the questions we've been getting. So welcome, Amanda. Would you like to turn on your mic and introduce yourself and your role here at Redfern Legal Centre? Hi, my name is Amanda Brooker and I am a solicitor in the Inner Sydney Tenants Advice and Advocacy Service run out of Redfern Legal Centre. Thanks, Amanda. Before we get into the questions, I should just let everyone know that we've put together a set of useful resources online where you can get more information about this topic. Uh, the legalities that Amanda's going to talk about are too complex to you know, completely lay out in a video. So she's going to talk in fairly broad terms and then I'll refer you to those resources afterwards to get more detailed written information. Uh, the link uh, is on your screen. I'll, I'll put it up um, clearly at the end of the video. I should also stress that the video is general information and not legal advice. Near the end of the video, we'll let you know where you can get legal advice as a tenant in New South Wales. Okay, Amanda, let's get started. So back in April, the Prime Minister announced a six month moratorium on evictions. He said that no one would be evicted from their homes during that time. So has the New South Wales government made this law? The New South Wales government has introduced a limited moratorium on certain kinds of evictions for tenants that have been financially impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. The regulations also outline some other limited protections for tenants and porters in New South Wales that will last for a six month period that ends on the 15th of October 2020. And this week, the government also passed some amendments to the Residential Tenancies Act, which allows tenants impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic to apply to the tribunal to terminate their lease in certain circumstances with a reduced cap on the amount of compensation that can be awarded to the landlord. Okay, so it, it, it sounds complicated. Um, who's covered by the new regulations and, and what exactly do the regulations do? The new regulations apply to tenants uh, impacted fin financially by the COVID-19 pandemic. So impacted tenants are defined as those households that have had a 25% decrease in their household income due to the pandemic. So this decrease could be due to a loss of work, losing work hours, being ill with the COVID-19 uh, virus or having to, to care for somebody who has fallen ill with that virus and being un unable to work. So household income is calculated after tax and it also includes any government payments that a household may be receiving, which includes job seeker and also job keeper payments. Essentially, there are two parts to the new regulations or two parts to the moratorium. Firstly, there's an interim 60 day ban on evictions for rental arrears if you've been financially impacted by coronavirus. So if you meet that definition that we just talked about. This 60 day moratorium or, or ban is in force between the 15th of April 2020 and the 14th of June 2020. After the 14th of June, a landlord can go back to issuing a termination notice for rental arrears or applying to the tribunal for termination but only if you're 14 days behind in your rent, so you are in rental arrears, the landlord has attempted to negotiate in good faith using fair trading's dispute resolution process, and it's fair and reasonable in the circumstances to pursue the termination of your tenancy. The tribunal will have the job of deciding whether or not it's fair and reasonable in the circumstances uh, to terminate the tenancy. And they'll also have the job of deciding whether or not the landlord has negotiated in good faith. So they can consider the kinds of negotiations that you had, the sort of offers that were made. They can ask Fair Trading how their facilitation went of your negotiations. They can also consider your general financial position, the landlord's general financial position, and also the hardship that will be experienced by, by the parties involved. Okay, so you've talked about evictions because of rental arrears, being behind in the rent, but can a landlord still evict me for other reasons? The regulations are quite limited in nature and the moratorium does only apply for terminations uh, for rental arrears if you're, if you're considered an impacted tenant. 
A landlord can therefore still pursue termination for other reasons. So these other reasons could include ending an agreement at the end of the fixed term, uh, no grounds terminations to end a periodic agreement, terminations for breaches other than rental arrears, or termination for rental arrears if you're not considered an impacted tenant. What the regulations have done though, is they have increased the notice periods required for some of the other kinds of evictions. For example, termination notices issued for the end of a fixed term now need to give 90 days notice rather than the 30 days notice that a landlord would ordinarily be required to give. So our advice there is that if you receive a termination notice for some other kind of termination, to make sure that you check the notice period um, that you've been given and also check resources that are available online to make sure that that notice has been given validly before you move out. So what happens after six months? So the regulations apply for six months. After that date, we're not sure what will happen. So the government obviously has the power to extend the regulations. They have the power to create new ones, or we may just see sort of the ordinary, um, ordinary exercise of the law return, depending, I guess, on the situation that New South Wales is experiencing after the six months. But at this stage, um, the obligations uh, that have been uh, required by the regulations uh, and the new sort of insertions into the Residential Tenancies Act will cease to have effect um, after the 15th of October 2020. So um, if I've got problems paying my rent, should I just stop paying rent and wait for the landlord to contact me to, to negotiate? So you should continue to pay as much rent as you can whilst attempting to negotiate with your landlord. Of course, you should definitely make sure that you have the money to eat and pay for the other necessities that we have during this time. But you should also do some calculations with your household to determine how much rent that you can afford to pay and continue to pay at least that amount. You don't need to wait for the landlord to pursue or to initiate any rent negotiation process with you. You can, and we do encourage tenants to initiate the process themselves. So there are a lot of resources online about initiating a request for a rent reduction or to initiate the rent negotiation process. And so we would encourage you to have a look at that and to get the process going as, as quickly as you can. Our advice is to be proactive. If you know that you're gonna struggle to pay the rent, then you should definitely get in touch with your landlord and begin those negotiations. It's the best way to try and avoid any arrears accruing, so therefore any debt you may have further down the line. And it may also open up the new opportunity for you to terminate your agreement um, if the landlord refuses to negotiate or you can't come up with, with a, suitable, uh, a suitable negotiation option. Okay, so a lot of people are asking us, um, do, do landlords have to reduce or defer rents for people who've lost income? Um, and is there a formula that that's based on? So the only requirement that the new regulations provide is that a landlord has to enter into good faith negotiations with a tenant using fair trading sort of uh, dispute resolution uh, mechanism um, before they pursue termination for rental arrears if you're an impacted tenant. So the regulations do fall short of requiring landlords to agree to a rent reduction or even a rent deferral if their tenants are struggling to pay the rent. In saying that though, part of negotiating in good faith means that reasonable offers have been made and are being made regarding the rent that's payable for the property. So you should still push your landlord to reduce the rent in a comparable way to the amount of income that your household has lost. It may also now be possible uh, to apply to the tribunal for termination of your agreement if the landlord does fail to enter into an agreement that will be affordable for you. So there's another option that wasn't initially available. So what should I do if my landlord's unreasonable about this? And what information am I required to provide to them about my personal circumstances? The regulations don't provide much guidance in terms of the information that's required to be handed over by landlords and tenants during their negotiation process and during their negotiations. And there's no prohibition as such on the sorts of things that a landlord might ask you for. You're not required, obviously, to hand over every piece of information that the landlord wants. And it may be reasonable for you as well to ask for documents from the landlord about their financial position um, to help you reach a settlement. 
it is reasonable to expect that tenants will need to provide proof that they have been impacted by COVID-19 and therefore covered by the regulations. So this kind of evidence could include a letter from your employer and pay slips from before or after you had your hours reduced or you were stood down, Centrelink statements confirming that you're receiving the JobKeeper or JobSeeker payment, or even medical evidence to say that you weren't able to work because of your experience with the coronavirus. It's important to note that a landlord can't encourage you to access your superannuation and they shouldn't be requesting documents about the kind of superannuation you have, um, as this could constitute sort of un unlicensed financial advice and it may not be in your best interest to use that super to pay your rent. Okay, so a lot of people just want to leave. They realise that, you know, any sort of rent is beyond them. Um, if I'm affected by COVID-19 and want to leave, what can I do? So how easy it is to terminate your residential tenancy agreement depends on the type of agreement that you have and the reasons why you'd like to leave. If you're in a periodic agreement, so there's either no fixed term or the fixed term is expired, you can leave at any time, provided that you give at least 21 days written notice to your landlord. So this is generally the easiest way to terminate that kind of an agreement. And it's also likely going to be the quickest way. So if you're in a, uh, a periodic agreement, it's quite easy to terminate. If you're in a fixed term, so for example, you're in an agreement that lasts for three or six or 12 months and that, that period is still ongoing, it may be more difficult to terminate your agreement and you may also be required to pay some form of compensation to your landlord. There are a number of options for you in terms of terminating this kind of agreement. The first is that you can terminate by consent with your landlord. If you and your landlord can negotiate to end your agreement with a limited amount of compensation that you can pay or no compensation at all, then that's an option that's available to you. You can decide to just break your lease early. Um, in this case, uh, you'd need to pay a break fee to the landlord. Uh, and this will be outlined in your agreement. There are two kinds of schemes for break fee amounts depending on when you signed your, your tenancy agreement. So depending on whether your agreement was signed before or after the 23rd of March this year will sort of depend, but you should uh, refer to your residential tenancy agreement for that scheme. Another option is that you can make an application to the tribunal for termination on the basis of hardship under section 104 of the Residential Tenancies Act. You'll need to show that the special circumstances in your case mean that you will suffer hardship if the tenancy is not terminated. And it's important to note that the tribunal does still have discretion as to whether some form of compensation should be paid to the landlord if you make this kind of application. So you probably need to be prepared with some form of argument as to why that amount should be reduced or why you shouldn't have to pay compensation for breaking your lease early. This week, Parliament also introduced some new amendments to the Residential Tenancies Act. And what it does is it inserts a new option for termination where tenants have been financially impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. It gives those tenants the opportunity to apply to the tribunal to terminate their agreement if the landlord refuses to enter into negotiations, the landlord fails to respond to a formal request for negotiations, whether by you or fair trading within seven days of that request, the landlord initially agrees to enter into rent negotiations, but then fails to respond or stops engaging, or if the agreement reached with you and your landlord isn't, is still not affordable for you either because of the amount of rent that you'd be required to pay or the amount of debt um, that will accrue as a result of that agreement. So in these circumstances, a tenant will be able to apply to the tribunal for termination. And whilst the tribunal will still retain a discretion as to whether or not they'll, you know, they'll order compensation, they'll be capped at the amount of compensation they can order, which is going to be a maximum of two weeks rent. So if you're in a fixed term and you're thinking about ending your agreement because of financial implications of COVID-19, you should definitely request a formal rent negotiation process and get that process underway as soon as you can. Um, and then also speak to your local tenants advice and advocacy service, because I understand as I'm saying this that, you know, it is quite a complicated scheme of, of regulations and, and um, legislation that is in operation at the moment. You took the uh, words out of my mouth. It's, it's very complicated. Um, and so you've mentioned getting legal advice. Um, what are the situations where you recommend people get advice? 
There's a lot of really great resources online that have a lot of information about the new COVID regulations, about the amendments to the Act, um, how they affect tenants, and also how to negotiate with your landlord. Um, but we're obviously still here to give you advice if you're struggling with that. So our best advice is to read the online resources first and to begin negotiations with your landlord. And at this stage, you should be seeking some advice from your local tenants advice and advocacy service. If you're issued with a termination notice, uh, your landlord refuses to negotiate or those negotiations have broken down or you're in a fixed term thinking about leaving because you can't pay your rent. Okay, thanks. Um, the final question, I guess, is where can tenants get legal advice? I'll, I'll answer this. Um, network of free confidential tenants advice and advocacy services across New South Wales. Uh, if you go to the following address, www.tenants.org.au and on the homepage there you can put in your suburb or town in New South Wales and it will give you the name and contact details of your local tenancy service and there's also an Aboriginal specific tenancy service for each location. That web address will be linked from our website, so don't worry if you didn't copy it down, you'll, you'll get that at the end. Um, so uh, Amanda works for one of these tenancy services, but you need to contact the tenancy service for your location. So use that address I gave you to look up your suburb or town. So thanks, Amanda. If you'd like to say goodbye and mute your mic. Absolutely. Thank you for having me and good luck, everyone. Happy negotiating. Thanks, Amanda. Um, Redfern Legal Centre's next video has some tips on negotiating rent reductions and deferrals with your landlord or agent during COVID-19. That video will be available through the same channels as this video. Uh, now I'll put up the web address uh, where our further written resources are. Thank you.